Today on Food Journey, I'm on my way out of my suburb to a place I haven't visited for years, Suriliri, to visit a funny, quirky, but well-seasoned chef, KD Prime, whose speciality is flavor. So let's go and meet this rock music and motorcycle enthusiast. Fasten your seatbelts and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Chef Katie, welcome to Food Journey. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted. The first time I met you, we were at a food event. True. And I didn't really get a chance to speak to you about food in general. And I was very intrigued um, by you. And I'm happy to be here today. Well, well even though that sounded like the start of all bad relationships, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm proud to be here. You're welcome, in the culinary sense. Yes. Yes. So tell me a little bit about you and your emergence into the culinary scene. A lot of people say it started off when they were very small. Is it the same for you? How did it start? Cooking, in fact, very interesting story. Mm -hmm. First thing I ever cooked in my life was about age seven, and it was frying eggs. Wow. And I just found it so intriguing that you could put something that is liquid, add it to oil and fire, and it becomes solid. Mm. And then you add all of these things inside. I didn't know there were ingredients and spices and everything. And it becomes tasty too. And I was hooked immediately. Lovely. So what that actually tells me is that you've been interested in the chemistry side of cooking for quite a long time. Yes, even before I could spell or know what chemistry was, yes. Chef Katie has a vast repertoire, as I said, local classics and definite American influences too. This private chef and food events creator also inspires in his cooking classes. So I detect an American accent there. And, you know, when we do that, we tend to think that there are some American affiliations have you spent time in America doing culinary stuff? Did your journey start there? Tell us. Whew. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. We lived alone in New York. My sister was 15. I was nine. Mm. Yeah. And I could remember then, my sister was the one that cooked, and um, I was the one that consumed, until she got her first job while she was in college. And my mom came for a visit once and said, your sister can't be walking and coming back to cook for you. Go and boil me rice. Do you know, I was terrified. And then my mom told me to, that she was going to make stew and she'd go and boil meat. And I was like, huh? I mean, Without I, any guidance? I, da -da. <laughs> I mean, I haven't even gotten over the rice thing and you're getting you're onto going meat. To meat. Talk about trauma. It's a um, baptism of fire. Uh, I love cooking Nigerian dishes, probably because it's what I've cooked most over the years. But... The challenge with Nigerian food is making it look sexy. A lot of our food just looks complacent. Now we're the chopper, now we're the chopper, we're in the. That's not the way it should be. Through work experience with various chefs, KD developed his skills, including making a mean cocktail. He has an eclectic collection of peculiar things. And plays a sharpish game of pool. Let's see what he's teaching us today in the kitchen. So what are we going to do first to make our African salad? Well, I'm glad you asked, Sonia. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people look at dishes like African salad and all they see is, bam, what's in front of them. But even for the basic one, there's a lot of prep that goes into, into so it. Because there's so many components. Yes. But this one is actually going to be a sexy one. So a lot more is going into it. Okay. So I decided for, for you, because you're my guest today, yes. to make a righteous fish stock. You've often heard me talk about using fish spines to make a stock. Let's see what Katie has planned. So this is the carcass of the, flat, of the catfish. Now, the next part is building the flavor. The flavor that's gonna put character into our dish and take it away from being a normal African salad and becoming 
a becoming a Nigerian dish that is worthy of the gods. Okay, well, I love that. Worthy of the gods, my goodness. But one thing I have to say is that there actually isn't anything wrong with the African salad. But what we're doing is we're bringing it into 2020. We're bringing it into a different culinary perspective. Yes, we are. Yeah. All right. Love this. So, we're starting first out with first. a bit of ginger. Ginger. Next. In we go. A bit of sage. Everything here is just building the layers of flavor. One thing I believe in is that layers of flavor makes every dish fantastic. This is some powdered coriander. As you note, Sonia, I'm not measuring. Yeah, I love the fact you're not measuring because I seldom measure. No, because when you measure, I mean... I somebody... measure, but I'm measuring with my eyes and exactly. my guts. Exactly. So Katie, when we're talking about um, spices yes. and we're talking about making a stock, yes. how much of the stock has to do with the actual thing we're boiling and how much of it has to do with the things we add? That's a fantastic question. Okay. Remember, when you're making a stock, depending on whether it's vegetable, if you turn around... Ooh, see, that's a lot of salt. It's not in here. There's okay. a jug of water behind you. Pour. Okay, tell me when to stop. Keep going. Probably gonna need everything. Yeah. Dump. Yeah, that's fine. Great. Yeah. First things first, salt is flavor, so you have to know how to balance it. Yeah. Um, when you're making a stock, remember your stock is dependent on water. You have to have a lot of water. And the way stocks work is you're gradually extracting flavor out of the essence of whatever flesh you're using. Right. So here we have fish carcass, basically the spine of bo fish bone. Mm -hmm. It's okay, forget carcass, I never heard. Fish bone. Right. So all of the seasonings we've put in have been put in to heighten the flavors of the fish. So there's white pepper, there's sage, there's coriander, there's marjoram leaves. Salt is the almighty. And then there's black pepper as well. Black pepper and, uh, no sorry, there's white pepper. Mm -hmm. White pepper is interesting because it adds structure to the flavor. Okay, let and me try and decipher that in, in my sort of like the layman's terms. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're afraid of salt <laughs> nowadays. But what you're saying is that salt is essential in a stock because it lifts everything yes. else that you put into yes. the stock. Without salt, you can't have flavor, full stop. Right. Okay, I thought without fat, you can't have flavor, <laughs> but that too. Fat even is even flavor if you too. have a piece of meat that has fat and you fry it. Yeah. Until salt is introduced. You can't actually really taste, taste that flavor. Exactly. So salt is essential here. I so mean, we shouldn't really fear the amount you. you put in there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And remember, I'm balancing out with the water content. Good. So, uh -huh. and the amount that you're going to get in your portion yes. of whatever is cooked with the salt yeah. will be minimal compared to the overall amount that was in exactly. the stock. Exactly. And then remember, I'm using this stock for a dish. So I can still balance out the salt in the final dish. Exactly. All right. Uh, one last thing I forgot. What? Lemon juice. Lemon juice? Yes. So what's that going to actually do? It's going to give acidity and and it's also going to help the structure of the flavor. Okay. Remember, when you're building flavor, it's like, it's like building a house. Mm -hmm. No, it's like doing decking. If you don't have enough iron rods, crisscross, 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 right. it will collapse. Good. So this is the strength well. in the exactly. dish. That's it. All right. Let's have a look at this. Chef's always tasting. What do you feel, what do you feel there? Water. So a little more water is added. Add it all. Perfect. Ah, I forgot. What did you forget? Hey. The garlic, the garlic. Katie has stored over time a large quantity of extremely potent garlic, which smells just heavenly. This garlic is six years old. Yeah, <gasps> you got it right. My goodness. Six years. I gotta smell it. I have to smell this. Wait. Oh my God, you can, oh, look at the oil in here. Mmm. I wish the air smelled like this. <laughs> I always tell people the most important ingredient in cooking is garlic. Time. No, 
garlic for me. Time. Time for you. Oh, time as in time. take your time. Our dishes, flavor profile-wise, are not heavy on garlic. Right. But if you put it far enough in the background, it is going to give it structure without imposing on the overall dish. Love it. Let's so, get in there. Mm. Now you can see that this is very close to coming to a boil. Right. At this point, before it actually comes to a rolling boil, we're going to lower the heat. Now by lowering the heat with fish, you stop, it from, you stop the stock from going cloudy. And then you actually allow the flavors and the flavor molecules to develop at their own pace Great without enough. forcing them. I love that. So it's actually about respecting yes. the rules of chemistry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to taste this. You want me to taste this? Wait, wait, cheers. Okay. Of course. Stock cheers. And. It's deep. And what I love is that after I've tasted all the the other spices then the lemon hits me so it's almost like things are being tasted in turn beautiful when you taste it it should hit you like you're like you're climbing steps <gasps> so ta 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 summit ta 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 good i love it so it's almost like fireworks exactly uh -huh. have i got things it bursting in your mouth <laughs> funny you should ask <laughs> Now, we have our stock. It's at a place that I'm comfortable with. That right. In the next 10, 15 minutes, we're going to be here. that. Okay, we'll be ready. So, what I want to do is, remember, we're, uh, we're doing a riff on African salad on yes. the back. So, what do you have in your normal African salad? Obviously, you have your back. You have your... Banshee. Well, stock your... Stockfish, but I'm not doing stockfish. Cassava. Uh -huh, you have your abacha. I'm not doing abacha. I'm doing bog standard duba. So you have your utazi, you have your garden egg, you have your onions. And onions are always raw in them, right? In my one experience of having a bacha, the onions were raw. We ain't doing raw onions today. Okay. So if you notice, this pot has been hanging around. What's in it? Palm, Palm oil. oil. Okay, now we all know that that's one of the major ingredients in abacha. And this is village palm oil. Katie had already sliced these big purple onions. Very strong flavor indeed. The onions are sauteed in the palm oil and a stock cube is added. So now we've got a liquid that looks cloudy-ish but beautiful. So what I want to do now is I'm going to strain out the fish bones and I'm going to now use this to do our shrimp. Oh, you didn't know there's some shrimp coming to party. So we're straining out all the liquid. A lot of people when they buy shrimp they start washing them and <laughs> as you're washing any protein you're getting flavor away. So what I do is when I get my shrimp, this is frozen shrimp by the way, I got it out of the pack, the ice, the water, everything, I saved it because it's all flavor. Everything here you have here is essence of shrimp and we're adding it right to that. Now it's on a high temperature so it's going to cook fairly quickly, which is what I want. Sonia, can you do me a favor and toss the onions a bit? There we go, look at that beautiful caramelization happening on that looks like crayfish yes all right you're a mind reader and a I'm just and a ball watcher okay so this is hey you can see don't be shy come on <laughs> so there's our crayfish. ground crayfish i always have ground crayfish in the house i'll know when i'm where i want tap, tap, tap. and that's good for this one i'm actually just going to add one good tablespoon nice and that's that tell a lot of smells are going on I can smell a lot, a lot of, stuff. of aromas. I can smell the pungency of that crayfish. Yeah. It's really taking over everything at the moment. Delicious. And I'm watching the shrimp. I don't want them overdone. Because yeah, overdone they shrimp take can like be rubbery. 20 seconds. Yeah. So what do we turn off the fire now? No, no. Or yeah. just move it. I'm just gonna move it. 
But they're still just in the liquid. Oh, yeah, they're going to be a little They'll liquid. be all right. Because I'm going to move them while they're still slightly raw. Yeah. But right. Can I taste one? Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. The big one, of course. She went for the big shrimp. And this is done. It's perfection. Yeah. Now, I'll use the other spoon. You can see, the most important thing you should take from this is that we've lost volume. The onions have reduced. It's much smaller than what we had before. But the flavor is so concentrated. Wow. We're frying catfish in the deep fryer for this one till it's crispy and setting it aside for our finished dish. And now we're ready to do the sauce. And your involvement is actually quite paramount. Yay. Because I'm not an octopus. Ah. At least not today. Well, we've got four arms. <laughs> okay. We're going to start with a base of palm oil. All right. Mm. Not our same village palm oil. Let me add a bit more. Nice. Now, we're adding what we call, what they call opa. Opa, we're using this instead of potash or pong or akao or some people call it. A lot of people have, tend to react to potash. So this is a good alternative. This is actually, I don't know the name of the leaf. It's a derivative from a certain leaf? Yes, it is. Okay. Then the water is extracted and it's put in a nice bottle like this. Do we know what leaf? Um, they'd have to kill me and you if I, I told you. Okay. Or them. Secretly. So what you do, I'm going to add it drop by drop. Right. While you stir. Okay. Stirring. And, and through the magic of chemistry. It's thickening. it's thickening. Without heat or anything. That's some strong stuff. And you can Literally, that. we did like... A tablespoon or two. Yeah, that's incredible. So, next thing, mm -hmm. I'm going to add dried roasted Cameroon pepper. Oh, I love Cameroon pepper. It's going to be hot. Put in some more crayfish. Remember, we have the theme of crayfish and seafood running through this whole dish. We do? Yes. There you go. Mmm. So I am going to taste. Could you bring up the... I have to tell you, this absolutely smells amazing. <laughs> okay, we're tasting. I'm tasting. Just needs a little bit of salt. And you know where we're getting our salt from? From the stock. Exactly. Okay. Mm. Let's taste that again. Okay. actually does need salt proper now. Because if I put any more... For me, it's enough salt. How do you like my old bucket of salt? I love it. He's <laughs> a, he does everything in large quantities here. Big salt, big garlic, yeah. Hello. So when I run out, I'll be like, got any salt, got any garlic? <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic. Mm. So we're good to go. All that's left, we add Aogba to this emulsion. And ladies and gentlemen, it is an emulsion. Niger food has technical elements too. Once you add palm oil to a base, it will thicken. Ta-da! Okay. And this is the same sauce you can use for Isiwu and Nkwabi as well. In fact, it's not, even, it's not too far from Owosu. Wow. So we're about to add our Ugba. Okay. That's it. So, it right in. Very good. Very good. Do you like that folding? Very good. 10 points. Uba comes from the African oil bean tree. It has a pleasant, easy to digest and chewy texture. We're also adding a very clever extra twist to this dish today as well. So Katie, I've seen something very interesting here. And I know there's a bit of a story behind it. Yes, there is. Because when we spoke, you said you were going to do a bit of a pickled cucumber. And I'm really happy to see that it actually isn't a pickled cucumber by some 
<laughs> magic, <pokery>. of, <laughs> magic of communication. We got um, garden eggs instead of cucumbers, but look at this. This amazing liquor here, which is... It's my standard pickling fluid. Lovely. And I see you've got black peppercorns yeah, in there peppercorns. and everything. And the garden egg. Yeah. I need to taste one of these because I need to just let people know what that experience is like. Fork. This garden egg has not been cooked. So here we go. Mm. Mm. It's so much meatier than a cucumber. Yeah. You actually feel like you're chewing something that's just not going to dissolve in your mouth in a minute. A triumph. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for whoever you sent to get cucumbers and they brought this instead. <laughs> <laughs> leaf is Utazi leaf. This is a leaf that they use for fresh fish pepper soup, for uh, mkwabi, for, for isio. It is a leaf that is intrinsically bitter. Now it's time to plate. And layer by layer, this beautiful dish is put together. And what a stunning finish. Absolutely fantastic and I'm dying to taste it. And that is my deconstructed African salad with deep fried catfish. Ready to do my favorite thing. And that is? Trying. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Okay. So I brought cheers. the knife for you. All right, cheers. You hit it out of the ballpark. Thank you very much. And I have to just thank you so much, Chef Katie. It was my pleasure. For coming on Food Journey today and showing us that our food can be presented in different ways, different styling, subtlety of taste, but still be our Nigerian classic fare. And from Food Journey, we say goodbye. See you next time. Ta-ta.